Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today what we're going to look at is an open source version of Deep Research that uses Firecrawl. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through a bonus round of connecting it into a API so that you can not only use it in your terminal, but you could actually try and use it in an API and even look at like different ways that we could add human in the loop. With that, let's get into it. All right, so I actually came across this on Twitter and it was uh, somebody's implementation or David's implementation on deep research and the ability to to kind of replicate this without having to pay the $200 um, marker. And, and this is like really great to see all these different open source tools that are coming, uh, you know, with the advancements of AI. And what I thought was interesting is that you can run it for five minutes or five hours um, and it'll just keep keep running. And that that's pretty interesting to me. So we're going to take a look at the uh, the repo, and the first thing that I kind of noticed was, you know, it has this great graph of like what is actually going on here. So you can define the depth, the breadth, and then you have your user query. It also has a step in here where it's going to ask you follow up questions, and then it's going to start doing its research, and then it's going to start doing after the the research, it's going to start going through this process of SERP, so uh, search engine result pages, and how it processes those results, and then the directions based on the learning from those searches. And then it kind of uh, continues to do that depth and refine its search, and then produces a markdown report. And what it actually does in order to do SERP is it's actually using something called Firecrawl. And so one of the things that I really love about Firecrawl is, you know, they actually have this new feature called Extract, but it basically takes uh, SERP and puts it into like an LLM ready format. You can actually go and crawl other pages and do all sorts of things with this. But one of the best things is it's also open source. So at this point we could host Firecrawl as well or run it locally. And then we can actually run our deep research as well, either locally. And one of the things that is uh, going on here though, is when you go through and actually deploy this, currently it only runs in the terminal. And so we're just gonna kind of look at what that looks like. And then we're also gonna do uh, a bonus experiment of just seeing what would it take to make this an API. And so the first thing you're gonna need to do is just go ahead and clone the project and then pull it into your ID. So I already have this set up. And I wanted to show the dependencies because I also thought this was really interesting that, you know, of course it's, it's all written in JavaScript. And so it has the fire call, uh, uh, package here. But then if you notice, it's actually using Vercel, uh, the Vercel AI package and the Vercel open AI. And I find that really interesting because you don't see a ton of examples of using the Vercel AI outside of Vercel, but it can actually be used independently. Uh, it's, in my opinion, a really great SDK. Uh, some of the advancements that they're doing with uh, Vercel 4.0 is, is pretty awesome. So the next thing to kind of look at is what can we do with our environment variables? So the first thing is, is again, you can, uh, for Firecrawl, you can uh, just put in your key. You can also put in the Firecrawl base URL, right, in case you're running locally or if you're running uh, your own instance. Otherwise, it'll default to uh, to the Firecrawl paid service. You put in your OpenAI key. But what's also interesting about this is you can see down here, you can actually point this at any really any OpenAI compatibility API. So you could use Llama. You could technically use DeepSeek. You could really use anything to uh, any compatible OpenAI endpoint to actually pull this in. So this is another reason where you, you can use open source models right out of the box. For our test, we're just going to uh, use uh, O3 mini, just because that's the default. But super interesting that you can actually pull uh, in from your local, or you could actually pull in from other different models. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll uh, take a look at what's going on under the hood. And we're going to see that it's going to ask us a bunch of questions in this run. Uh, in this run, and what that means is that we're actually interfacing with with this through the terminal. So we're going to go ahead and do a default run, and we'll see what this 
looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and do npm run start, because this is the default, and we'll see what we get. So as you can see, what would you like to research? So uh, one of my interests is robotics, so we're going to look at robot trends in 2025. And what breadth do we want? So you can have uh, you know as high as 10, the default being 4. We'll just kind of keep it with the default for now. But again, this is this breadth is going to is going to tell you how deep the research should go and how long it should go, right? And the the higher that you have, the longer that it's it's going to. Same thing with the depth, right? We have the ability to go uh, through one through five, the default being two. So we're just going to say two for now. And now it's actually creating a research plan behind the scenes, but it's going to ask us questions. And these questions change every single time. It's not the same questions. It's taking your query and then defining what questions should it come up with in order to uh, refine its, its search. So I'm going to say uh, industrial, actually, I'm going to say AI humanoids. Let's see what, what, even though it's not on the list, let's see what comes up with. Uh, and so again, it's going to answer us a follow-up question, and I'm going to say market growth. And are you looking for global trends? I'm just going to say U.S. And now what it's actually doing is going through and building the topics for us. So as you can see, it's starting to put together queries and what its research goals are. And while this is running, I'm actually going to go through some of the code. So when we're looking at, again, we have multiple different providers. This goes back and forth to the Vercel piece. We can actually look at the prompt. I also found this really interesting so that you have the date. So it's actually aware of the time, right? Because LLMs don't understand that. You have to actually send that information. And then it's put this prompt. We could actually uh, change. We could also add, you know, our own personalization to this if we want. And then the deep research itself, again, we're using Firecrawl. It's going to generate the SERP queries. This is what we just saw up here. And then it's going to do what it learns, right? and then give itself feedback based on those learnings of what it went out and crawled. So as it's going through and it processes the SERP, and as this write the final report will come back after all of the iterations, it's actually getting, again, this is our feedback, right? So the questions it asked in the beginning. And then it's taking all of that into how long it should actually research. And right here we have our new breadth and new depth, and we're continuing to process. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause this until it's over, and then we'll see what the results are. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Also, please go check out Text Yourself. It's a simple application that I built that helps keep me on track. All you have to do is SMS different tasks and reminders that you need to be sent back to yourself. With that, let's get back to it. All right, so it went ahead and returned the result, and we're going to actually see what this looks like. So in the terminal, it's actually showing us all the... Let's just pull this up, actually, since it's so big. It's actually showing us all the data that it went through. So once it actually got through these learnings, it started to actually write all of the learnings out, the things that it understood, right? It visited 43 URLs, right? So in Firecrawl, I mean, you again, you get 500 for free, but then if you were running this locally or uh, through open source, but it's 400 different requests in order to scrape all this information, or not 400, 40. Um, and then it's actually going to generate the report. So this is the final report. It actually takes all of this and outputs it as markdown. And then it's actually going to return a markdown file right here, this output file. 
And so we can kind of see what the actual report is. And it's pretty in depth, right? Like that's a pretty long report on its findings. Um, I would say it's more in depth than things that I've seen with, with uh, different GPT uh, outputs like this, um, which is super interesting. But we know it's a little bit limited, right? We know that it's limited to the terminal. So what if we just uh, turn this into an API? So I went ahead and I used cursor and I just had it generate uh, an API for me. And so it knew, right, that we need to provide a query, we need a breadth, depth, and then the follow-up answers. This part's interesting to me because we don't actually know what those follow-up answers are going to be. So how would it actually handle that? So if we actually look in this, the API, this is just a, an express app that it generated. We can see that it's pulling the parameters that it expects. We could actually add, you know, some authentication here, just looking for like a, a header and, a, and an XBI, X API header. Um, but it still goes through and it takes the questions and then it looks for those questions and you can pass an array. And if it doesn't have the, the question for that answer, it's just going to say no answer provided. This is still a bit risky, right? Because we don't actually know what the questions are going to be coming back. So by default, it'll give us an option to say that, uh, to go ahead and use your best judgment, right? Or like, it, I'm not going to provide any answers. Or we could ultimately turn this into a human in the loop. And so let's go ahead and run this API and try Bruno, and we'll actually see what uh, some of the results are there. So if I just come back to my terminal, and now that that run has, we'll do npm run API. Again, remember, I built this, so this is not a part of the uh, stack. But what I had to do is I had it just generate this, and we can go into Bruno, and we can actually say, here's our requests, here's our breadth, and here's our follow-up answer. Again, I don't know what these will be, so I'm just gonna say use best judgment. And we can see that this is gonna take a while, right? Like it's gonna go ahead and it's just gonna start going through the motions of, of what it's doing. And we'll see it actually start returning the information. And while this is processing, since we know that this is gonna be a problem, we don't know how to do the answers. You could either do this with a human in the loop or some sort of chain. So. One way I was thinking about doing this is you could actually use wait for event in ingest. Ingest is essentially a background queue, also has an open source version, where you could actually wait for an event to be triggered that would say that uh, this follow-up question was answered. And so you could send that information out via email, you could send it to uh, you could send it to Slack, like in one of the previous videos I did, you could actually do a webhook into Slack and have that be your chat uh, implementation so that you could actually take that and respond to it in, for instance, like a, a Slack thread. So I thought this would be an interesting way of how you could actually introduce uh, the, the, a uh, human in the loop for something that is going to ask you questions but still make it an API. So let's just take a look at this and see what's going on behind the scenes. So again, it's actually going out and it's doing all of the learnings and the breadth and the depth that we wanted to see. And when this finish running finishes running, we're actually just going to see it return the markdown in this particular event. We could actually then take that and put it through something like NAN and actually publish this information or the search that we actually found. All right, that's it for us today, everyone. So what we went through was an open source version of Deep Research, how you can connect it, and what it's at, what the guts actually are using Firebase, and then how you could also actually turn this into an API really simply. With that, happy nerding.